Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this two-part video, you should be able to describe the structures of the polysaccharides which form starch. You should then be able to explain how the structure of starch relates to its function in cells. In a previous video, we looked at the structure of glucose. Remember that glucose is produced in plant cells using light energy trapped during photosynthesis. This means that glucose is a store of chemical energy, and the energy can be released during respiration. Now there is one key fact about glucose that you need to learn. Glucose is extremely soluble in water. That's because it contains a large number of hydroxyl groups. Hydroxyl groups are polar due to the small negative charge on the oxygen atom and the small positive charge on the hydrogen atom. This means that hydroxyl groups can form hydrogen bonds with water molecules, and this makes glucose extremely soluble in water. And remember that scientists call molecules like this hydrophilic. Now, because of its solubility, there is one big problem with glucose. If a cell contains a large amount of dissolved glucose, then this can cause water to move into the cell by osmosis. And you'll see why when we look at osmosis in later videos. So to solve this problem, plant cells store glucose as starch. And we're going to look at that in the next section. OK, so as we've seen, plant cells store glucose as starch. And we find starch in starch grains. Now, starch actually consists of two molecules. These are called amylose and amylopectin. In this video, we're going to look at the structure of amylose. And remember that in the exam, you could be asked to describe this structure. The first idea you need to understand is that amylose is a polymer of alpha-glucose molecules. Now, we've already seen that two alpha-glucose molecules can join together to form the disaccharide maltose. And remember that the glucose molecules are joined by a 1,4-glycosidic bond. This is a condensation reaction because a molecule of water has formed. Now, if we join together a large number of alpha-glucose molecules, then we make the polysaccharide amylose, and I'm showing you that here. Now, I'm just showing four molecules of alpha-glucose. However, amylose can contain hundreds or even thousands of alpha-glucose molecules. Again, you can see that the alpha-glucose molecules are joined by 1,4-glycosidic bonds, and each bond forms in a condensation reaction, producing a molecule of water. The amylose molecule then twists into a compact helix, with hydrogen bonds forming between glucose molecules along the chain. Now, as we said before, starch is a store of glucose. So when the cell needs glucose, water is used to break the glycosidic bonds. And remember that this is called a hydrolysis reaction. In the next video, we're going to look at the other molecule found in starch. This is called amylopectin. We're also going to see how the structure of starch relates to its function.